this amazing, amazing spring data 2024.1 release is finally out. This is of course uh, included in Spring Boot 3.4. So if you're using Spring Boot 3.4, and you should, it's been out for a week now, uh, then you are already getting access to all the stuff that's in Spring Data. For those of you who don't know, Spring Data of course is a an umbrella project integrating, uh, among other things, Couchbase, Redis, MongoDB, JDBC, R2DBC, Neo4j, Apache Cassandra, and countless other data stores uh, besides. And that's just in the Spring Data project. There are even more still, you know, sort of sprawled across the ecosystem, uh, many of which are included in the various Spring Cloud adopter projects. Spring Cloud for um, Spanner, uh, GCP, we've got uh, support for Cosmos DB in, in the uh, Spring Cloud Azure. We've got support for, uh, you know, different uh, data stores in AWS and Spring Cloud AWS, et cetera, right? And, uh, and of course, there's other third-party projects as well that also have offerings. So for example, uh, Cockroach, DB uh, has a nice integration uh, with Spring Data. So yes, this is a very big project, but it's just, it, it, this release uh, unveils a lot of value, unlocks a lot of value uh, for those different projects that are supported in the mainstream release. But if you're, uh, you know, if you're using some of these other peripheral sort of databases, then they will be in turn uh, soon supported as well. So just hold on. Uh, we've got a lot of cool stuff, a lot of like, there's a lot of plumbing, a lot of like fundamental stuff that gets done in any given release to make it better and more scalable and more efficient. Uh, but there's some nice uh, user facing bits as well. The release, release announcement here does a really good job talking about some of them. So we talk about value expressions. This is actually a lot more than it seems. And we're, we'll come back to this in just a second. Uh, this is supported not in every project, I think Couchbase uh, and uh, oh, what else is the what's the other one that's missing here? Couchbase and Redis, it looks like. It looks like I'm gonna see Redis there, um, among others, are unsupported at the moment, but they're supported across these portfolio projects. Um, they've introduced a new SPI. So this is actually really quite nice because uh, uh, you know Spring has Spring Data has a number of different mechanisms by which you can extend the repository, right? You can actually add sort of mixins that allow the repository to do more and more for you. Well, that mechanism has been sort of contingent on you being in the same uh, component path, the same package uh, as uh, as the main code, um, and so you ended you ended up having to split packages or do other weird things like that. Now there's an SPI. You can actually register an interf a type inside of Spring Factories, and then that in turn will allow you to um, to register these things in a con sort of conf convenient uh, externalized SPI style. And this means that you might ship, for example, Spring Data extensions in your uh, Spring Boot auto configuration. Uh, you know, for example. So lots of really, really cool possibilities there. We won't get into the details, but moving on. Spring Data has new support for Apache Cassandra key space qualification uh, for tables and user defined types so that you can leverage multiple key spaces in a single application without using multiple CQL sessions, neat. Uh, there's a micrometer integration. Micrometer, of course, is the observability package uh, that we built in 2017 that underpins the support for observability, metrics, uh, you know, and uh, time series uh, tracing. Uh, that kind of stuff. All that underpins the support we released in Spring with 2.0 back in 2017. Um, and so just to be clear, Spring depends on Micrometer, not the other way around. You don't need Spring to use Micrometer. So many, many different external database drivers and technologies uh, provide their own Micrometer integration, sort of like uh, logging, right? I mean, countless libraries provide uh, logging output that you can uh, tailor using your, your logging provider of choice, be it Log4j or Commons Logging or SLF4j or whatever. And so we support the same way, in the same way, you can use the core SPIs from Micrometer, and then uh, somebody who consumes your library, which in turn has this you know observability output, uh, can then configure as they like their time series database, their uh, distributed tracing system, etc. And so it's very much the same for logging, right? I can configure my own appenders, my own output, uh, and all that stuff for various logging technologies, as long as there is logging, right? And, uh, and so what's happened here is that the support for logging that was in the Lettuce Redis driver, which used to live, you know, the output from for observability that used to live in the Jetis client is now being is now prioritizing the Lettuce Micrometer observability classes. So kind of interesting, really, really interesting. Um, yeah, just a, just a lot of really cool stuff in here. Uh, what I wanted to talk about, I mean, we can see general themes. Uh, oh, by the way, there's also incredible performance gains in the JPA query enhancer. And, uh, and so, you know, a lot of cool stuff in here. What I really wanted to focus on, but, oh, by the way, also some deprecations as always. Remember, we are facing uh, spring framework uh, seven next year and Spring Boot four. 
So now is the time to take note of deprecations, any depreciations, uh, deprecations rather, across of, uh, the various projects. You want to note them and, and, and uh, comply with them now so that they don't, uh, when they're eventually uh, taken away outright, uh, don't cause any issues later. Uh, we have Spring Data MongoDB 4.4, new support for expiration time in the time series annotation, right? Key space qualification in Cassandra, CQL uh, specification entry points, the specification builder, uh, and a CQL generator, right? This is nice as well. Spring Data Rest, we talked about that. Uh, yeah, just a, just a nice release overall with lots of updates and uh, features there. Now, what I wanted to talk about is the value expressions. So I've got a sample here. This is a Spring application, a Spring Boot application that I went into uh, the Spring Initializer and I stood up. It's 3.40 and using Java 21, Spring Data uh, JDBC is my my module of choice uh, for SQL data access, but you do you. I've got the Docker Compose support set up here. I'm using Postgres, so I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna run against Postgres and that Docker Compose file was created by the Spring Initializer for me automatically. And uh, other than that, you know, I'm, I've just got some basic code here. So let's take a look at the tests. The first thing we wanna do is look at value expressions. Now, value expressions broadly are, you know, it's what they're talking, when they say value expressions in Spring Data, what they're talking about is the ability to use Spring expression language uh, expressions or property placeholder resolution uh, expressions within queries and within various places that expect dynamic uh, attributes. And so here's the low-level API, right? This is a test of the low-level API, and this is the org Spring Framework Data expression uh, package. There's, an in, there's a type here called value evaluation context, and uh, basically it takes the current Spring, in fr Spring Framework environment. Uh, it takes a standard evaluation context for spell. You might be able to inject this. I'm just going to create a new one here because why not? Uh, and then you uh, then we create a value expression parser from uh, the configuration here, which is you know the configuration comes from spell expression parser, and then we finally we can we can actually uh, give it a string and have it evaluate uh, the, uh, the expression. So just a simple example, given a property called message, and then a dash, and then a spring expression language expression, where I'm doing some multiplication. Six times seven is uh, forty-two, and then I'm uh, adding that up and uh, getting and turning it into a string. Okay, so this is a property placeholder from the environment, and this is a Spring expression language. Spring expression language uh, expression, quite like the JSF expression language or the JSP expression language or OGNL or JBoss uh, EL or whatever, except that uh, the Spring expression language is, uh, as far as I know, more mature than all of those at this point. And uh, it's pretty simple. Given this, we're able to evaluate the, re the results, and we should get Nihao dash 42. And the reason it's Nihao is because I've configured a property. I'm registering this property with a Spring Framework Dynamic Property Registrar. This gets run during the test. I, I suppose I should make this a test configuration, okay? And uh, this gets run during the test, and it contributes a message, and the value of that message is Nihao. So it's gonna resolve that property from the environment. It's gonna be replaced with Nihao, and then it'll get, uh, it'll get replaced with 42. So let's just run this simple test and see that that works as we expect, and it does not. Uh, why? Oh, because I didn't run the, um, it's a Spring Boot test, but I forgot to tell it to run the Docker Compose file. Okay, let's do that. I probably don't need all of the Spring and the, I don't need a data source for this particular example here, obviously, but let's just get it across the line. There we go. Okay, so the test is fine, right? It, it, it's, you can see this f core fundamental mechanism and how it works. Um, let's take a look at it in uh, application. So I've got now another uh, definition here. I've got a customer entity, which has an, I, uh, an ID, a language, and a name. I have a schema here. I've got a schema ID, name, language, operating system. And these are three uh, properties and uh, they're all strings except for the ID. And some sample data, yeah? So I go here, delete from data, delete from customer, insert into customer values, insert into customer values, insert into customer values, okay? So name, language, operating system, Jane, English, Windows, uh, Janice, uh, Chinese, Mac OS X, and Janet, uh, German and uh, Linux, okay? So pretty, you know, boring uh, uh, test here. And uh, if we go back to our code, we have a repository. So I have several different, you know, trivial queries here. I'm saying uh, I want to be able to select all from the table name that is provided uh, as in a Spring expression language. So basically Spring data knows, it, it has a mapping from this entity, this, this uh, type that we're going to manage, to the table name. 
and that property lives off of the root object whose field you can dereference with uh, with a you know a pound sign or hash. So it's you know root it's implicitly root object dot table name is what you're seeing there, right? So the table name is available inside of a Spring expression language, which is demarcated with a, a pound sign or a slash a hash sign. So it's pound uh, curly bracket, then some expression, and then curly bracket, right? So I'm saying select all from the table name. What is the table name? Well, it's whatever this is mapped to, okay? And so this is kind of a, a cute way of having uh, Spring Data insert the SQL table here. Because remember, I'm using Spring Data JDBC, so it's very convenient to be able to ask for the SQL table name here, and it'll automatically get mapped to an entity for me. How convenient, right? Here's another query, okay? Another query. Select all from customer where the language equals, and here I'm doing a named parameter, right? So I'm, I'm doing a parameter and I'm saying f select all from where it equals this uh, locale. And, uh, you know, it's a, the locale is an object, it's a root object in the context of the Spring Expression Language. And I've contributed that object to the context by registering a evaluation context extension. This is another Spring Data, a Spring, Extra, a Spring Expression Language SPI that allows me to register an extension for objects of, that's prefixed with locale. And it in turn provides a reference to this. Have you heard of this before? This is one of those nice things that has been in Spring for so long, I'm not even sure people know about it. Uh, it's been in, how long has it been there? It's been 1.2. So yeah, so probably 20 years, right? This class is really, really nice. It's a simple class holder uh, that associates a local context instance with the current thread, right? The local con locale context is basically the current context of the current thread. And that will of course change uh, in a you know a Spring MVC application, as each re user comes in, you'll have different users with different time zones. If uh, somebody from the Netherlands logs in, or somebody from Germany or China or whatever logs in, they will get different uh, locales assigned to them in the request, right? Because based on their their headers in the browser, and then we uh, make sure that for the current thread, for the current HTTP servlet request, that this holder has a thread local value that points to the current language that's appropriate for the incoming request. So if you're unsure of what the user's locale is, just access locale context holder dot get locale and you'll be able to be able to read that and resolve that. So now going back to that, I can say select all from language uh, from customer where the language equals the current selected language, the current user's uh, current threads uh, language. How cool is that? Uh, here's another one. This one's also a really nice property placeholder resolution. This is what we mean by this release finishes up the support for value expressions because now you can do this as well. So I'm saying select all from customer where the operating system is some property called os.name. Now, of course, this is a bit of a silly example uh, because this is my operating system, right? So I'm using my operating system to evaluate this. So it's a this is just a system property. I'm not contributing it via dynamic property registrar or anything else, but you know, you, you could certainly. And I'm saying uh, select all from customer where OS equals, and I think it's Mac space OS capital letters uh, space X capital letter. And that'll return that. So let's see if that test works, huh? I mean, that's just, it's really cool that those all work. So uh, here's the uh, second test. Given the customer repository, we're gonna find all the customers and assert that we have three of them, fine. Uh, we're gonna then look for those with a, a certain language. Okay, we should have one. And, um, and then another one, uh, having the same operating system, okay? So we should have a one, okay? Let's just run this test. Nice, nice, right? All of this is just a, it, it just, it's just really, really powerful. And it's just the fact that this is all here now, uh, it's just so, so, so flexible, right? So I can actually have very dynamic queries here. I can actually have dynamic extensions to my Spring Data repositories. Um, I'm a big fan, big fan of what they've done here. Uh, hopefully you like some of this stuff too. Spring Data is an amazing project, right? And it gets better and better by the by the minute, uh, as always. So this is just one of those things that you get if you go to start.spring.io and generate a new project with uh, Spring Boot 3.4. Thanks for watching.